Hello, hi, how's it? In the name of Jesus Christ, how you doing? It's your girl, Cran Cake, Garabo. I hope you're good, I hope you're peachy, I hope you're stellar, and I hope you're in a neat little bunch. If you're not, welcome to the party, that's just the story of our lives, is it not? Okay, so today's the 30th of May, 2024, and I believe it was a day of voting in the country, but I really don't care, because I don't care much for what's going on in South Africa, I told you guys. I'm gone in this environment. I'm out of here. That's what's good. In spirit, even though my body might physically be here, thanks to all of this darkness. And today's actually a message along those lines. Alrighty, before we get into it, let me just put some caveats out there. Kindly look out for my captions. They're not always accurate. They sometimes use a small g for God. They are irreverent, therefore. They are sometimes the wrong word altogether. They are misspelled, etc. That's not me. I wouldn't go out like that. But I keep them there because I think they're cute and they're largely accurate. So that's all that matters. Secondly, I'm very potentially wearing application makeup. If I am, you'll know. If I'm not, you'll also know. It has a tendency to bounce off and on my face playing hide and seek. I'm not shape shifting. Just had to put that one out there. Okay. And then thirdly, I have a segment where I pinch my cheeks. To try and instill empathy in people, basically to display that when you prick me, I bleed and life is hard. So please just don't hurt me, but it doesn't really work, but I keep it anyway because I innovated it. It's my story and I'm sticking to it. Booyah, the intention is to blush my cheeks to bring out blood. To display that when you slash me across the throat, I die. Okay, because I can also bleed out. Uh, those of you that were wondering if slugging actually works, totally it does. It's winter right now. Well, hit it for winter. The first month of winter is commencing. It's happening now, not just day after tomorrow. January, February, March, April, May, June. Uh, so yeah, 31st. There is a 31st in May. So on the 1st, then it'll be officially winter. I can. Don't argue with me, it's a fact. Alright, yeah, these days facts are being disputed. Anyway, yeah. Uh, because of its wintry nature outside, my face has been super duper kelly friggy expiely dociously dry because of whatever it is that winter does to the skin. It makes it super dry despite the layers of product that I put on my face, okay? Uh, and the layers of which have got stuff in there that's moisturizing. It's got humectants, it's got emollients, it's got um all different kinds of stuff but it's not enough so i was not happy with the way that i woke up in the morning i looked super ashy dry and i was like no this is not healthy it can't be good i'm not i'm not young i'm not a spring chicken i'm 39 turning 40 this year so i can't afford to have all the juice drained out of my face by morning and i insist on using hyaluronic acid so even in winter. So I was like, what shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? What shall I do? I'm creating an icebreaker that we might ultimately get into some pretty deep stories. So hang with me. We will get to a point. Besides, those who care for their skin do actually want to listen. So let's just like do this for them. Alrighty. Not that anybody watches my content anyway. So my face like I'll just be in super duper califragy XBLE doshes dry. So I've also got acne prone skin so i have been scared to slug on my face because i did not want to get a new breakout of pimples or whatever but because i insist on using hyaluronic acid more so my, is my face just like cray cray dry but we all know how plumping and how moisturizing it can be during like you know moist season hyaluronic acid that is Mm. But it's not moist season, but I wanted the product on my face so that it can continue to moisturize my face, but there was no moisture. So I decided that I'm going to slug. For those of you who don't know what slugging is, I shall get into it. It is putting Vaseline on top of your face, on all of your product, whatever product it is that you have put on your face, putting that on top of it at night in the evenings. It's recommended that you do it only then, then and then go to bed because then it just seals in everything. And because Vaseline is not comedogenic, in other words, it does not clog pores, it's recommended because it's unlikely going to give you acne. But I have slugged in the past and got acne. Maybe the problem was with the products underneath. I don't know. Mm. Anyway, so I put a layer of Vaseline on top, but like I'm not a slobbering layer. Just like I would moisturize my face, my hands with, mo with Vaseline, and then I would just dab my face with it. And it's been like three, three and a half days on this feet. And guys what 
You see the proof in the pudding. Come on, don't act like you don't. It's working. Yeah. My face is like super plump and moisturized. And then in the mornings when I wake up, I'm not looking like a ghost. Amen. I don't look all ashy dry. That's what's good. So slugging is worth it. Those of you who wondered. I'm all about hints and tips. I'm all about sharing. I'm generous like that. But people are actually trying to exsanguinate me out of society. And that... That is unacceptable. Okay, anyway, whatever. So uh, consider slugging. And because it's winter, I'm also slugging in the morning routine on top of my morning products. And it's also working then too. Are you making me look like a dewy, like glowing sparkle? Ah, uh, we love it. And it has not brought acne on my face. So hallelujah. Mm, so far, so good. We're crossing fingers, though. But it's unlikely. Like, if I don't have acne after one night, then we know that the products are giving on my face. Okay? So I've, I've basically just, like, coined skincare at this point. Like, booyah. All right? Cheap. No how. Just in, yeah, if you want to know what I use on my face. I've got videos for days where, in the past, I explained that this here is not a skincare product. What is this channel? So go somewhere else. Okay? Alrighty. Cool beans and bananas uh let's move on this individual that's actually giving you free advice on like dry skin and moist skin and winter skin and hyaluronic acid and lack thereof hey batung you're trying to do away with me is that what we're doing is that what we're doing <laughs> at your own peril it's at literally at your own peril it is at your own peril it is i had a dream you guys that today you know at this video i'm not it's not gonna be long dream on dreamer i'm not doing two parts God willing. Mm. I'm not doing two parts. I'm only going to hang around in this one part and swivel around in it. Like um, a toilet cleaner inside the toilet swiveling around in all manner and kinds of gunky, disgusting stuff. I do feel like a toilet cleaner at this point. That is, however, blocked beyond repair, but I'm still uh, just swiveling a toilet cleaner in it. Toilet brush. I'm tired of being a toilet brush because that's what I feel like I am because I'm dealing with trash. I'm dealing with stools that are unflushable. I'm dealing with a recalcitrant general disposition in the streets on the left and on the right in the horizon and beyond. Even at the Hadron Collider at CERN where there are portals open for demons. I'm not getting anywhere. It's okay. It's all good in the hood because it has been written in God's word that there's going to come a time when Christians are not going to get anywhere in trying to reach some people for sins. And it's called the last days. People will not endure sound doctrine. And so having itching ears, they're going to gather for themselves a great number of teachers to teach them what those ears want to hear. And I'm like, you know what? We're done for. Except we're not really done for. You're done for as the human race. I'm just saying. Yeah, but some of us are not done for because we're going home. Hallelujah. Let's sing it. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home. We're going home to die no more. Except we're not even ever gonna die because like Elijah at the River Jordan, booyah, caught away in the sky, rapture, never see die, never see it, never days. Anyway, cool. Mm. We are going home from what the Lord has shown me. It is over. I think so. I'm not sure. I'm never sure. I've got like a Tomasian disposition. Like Thomas. That's what's good. I'm very doubtful. But I do believe it's happening. And the reason I'm imaginative that it's happening is because all different kinds of nasty things are still happening. But also that God done showed us, sister girl, that we're leaving home. We are leaving this age. We are leaving it, this planet. We are going home to die no more. And I'm looking forward to it. I'm done. I'm done. I'm finished. Fur neato. Tis over. Bizarre things happen in my absence. Do that. Go on right ahead and continue to be bizarre in my absence. I'm not doing it. I'm not hanging ten in these streets. I'm not chilling. I'm not maxing. And I'm not relaxing. I am shooting up in the sky like Buzz Lightyear. Watch it. Watch it. Anyway, cool. Now that you're feeling nice and threatened, let me tell you why under heaven I'm saying why the things that I'm saying. Mm. You know that song, I was five and he was six. We rode on horses made of sticks. He wore black and I wore white. 
He would always win at the fight. And bang, bang, he shot me down. Bang, bang, I hit the ground. Bang, bang, oh, that awful sound. Bang, bang, booyah, my baby shot me. Down. Mm. Just going and going and going and going and going. On a loop, despite the hyaluronic acid and the plumping, slugging skin care. After killing some females, you been doing it. I'm just saying, this is South Africa, the worst country to live in as a female. And so, of course, buggers in these streets be out here being six when we are five. And they're always winning the fight. Bang, bang. They shoot us down. Bang, bang. We hit the ground. Bang, bang. Oh. That awful sound, bang bang. This bugger done kill me again. Is that what's good? Death curses for real over and over and over. Ebatu. I'm feeling like I am going higher and higher. The more you try, I get in higher and higher. The more you try, I get in higher and higher. Yeah. Every time you try to shoot me. I aren't should be making like a helium balloon. Higher and higher. It appears there's nothing left for us to do in these streets anymore. Because they're always winning fights, why wouldn't they? They're men. The we They've got more muscle, so. Since I can't outrun your bullet. Since I am unable to outrun your kiss. Seeing as you are so many and you are shooting me down, bang, bang, I hit the ground, bang, bang, oh, that awful sound. Because you can't stand the prospect of me being with another person. Here's the problem of your dilemma. You shoot me dead, go out the planet. You shoot yourself in the foot. Because really and truly, this place is no longer going to be a going concern. I'm just saying. When you are take the Christian out, but I've been seeing it for a minute and I'm tired of repeating myself at this present moment. It appears we are spoon feeding and we are gonna seize hostilities against such activity as the Dreamon. It's not happening. Okay, now that we've put that out there, they then are like these rando ponies and clouds. Some females are doing these streets helping these murderous, homicidal, psychopathic, genocidal creeps of men. Hmm. Women helping them along. Hey, Batum. When is this gonna come to an end? When are we gonna be free from this rubbish? Because women are helping me die. The men are killing us. And we men are helping along. You think is the going concern this thing? That tomorrow is guaranteed, but you're mistaken, not again, not again, eventually everything comes to a blistering end, then you're gonna know what time it is, oh, because everybody gone now. That you were trying to destroy with your disturbing destruction. But then it became over before you could even wake up. I'm just saying, all these females in these streets helping these dudes be murdering some females. Oh, Bajung, Bonnie and Light. Is that what we're doing? Mickey and Mallory Knox, too young to die. Gangster couple. Cause you think he's romantic. Ah, Bajung. Hmm. So there are some crazy females out here helping some men destroy some lives. Who right? Who right? Who right? Who right? Who right? It's not a right, but it's a light. It doesn't matter what it is. At the end of the day, I'm going higher and higher. I'm going higher and higher. I'm going home. Mm. I ain't gonna be no victim. I'm not gonna be no victim. You be the victim, but not me. I'm not doing it. I'm not going to be the victim. But like in your attempt to make out of me a victim, I'm going to be putting your on pet. Oh, snap. She was in my grasp though, but then the Lord caught her up. In the sky, twinkling all the night. Now you see her, now you don't. Whoops. Mm. See a hump? 
And not ka seven in Jaga Brenda Festa. Saha bango seven. Not ka seven in Jaga Brenda. No, not like Brenda Farsi humbering at 7 pm, which is humbering. We don't know when. And it might even be before 7 pm. So, like, really? Or is it am? It's actually am. Saha bango seven. Look, I don't care. I think it's clear at this point. It's evident. It's written all over my big forehead that we don't care anymore. Because we don't want to be a swiveling toilet brush in a mouth. I'm tired of being a swiveling toilet brush, yeah. Hanging around some floating stools that don't want to flush. Ooh. I don't want to be a drain plunge. I don't want to be nothing like that. I just want to be a vessel of honorable you. So, with that being a total thing, you guys, we're just going to put it out there, that bony and light. Buzzards. You are disqualified. Mm. Over and above it. The Miras Random Ted Bundy Moses the Toilet Time Setup. Eh, uh, no. Sorry, delicious. Press the red button. <laughs> That's your head. <laughs> just exploding. <laughs> That's you just gone like <laughs> like star land on your boo <laughs> wormwood famine <laughs> war booyah you still arrogant on that day thing not because now God is judging you oh, uh, uh, oh. funny just hilarious it's hilarious hey bottom just because you can support each other in the mutiny against your own country doesn't mean this here is going to be a going concern and a mom mm. When all of a sudden it's a quart of wheat for a denarius, a quart of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. When there is a famine, shop like a hungry look. Now you got them gray lips, everything ashy, including your knees. Now you are just trying to humble yourself to the Lord of the Universe, but Hanolus Dosa Ojakota Kukasi. To a point of disregarding the fact that sanctity of human life is a thing. That Garbo was alive, that her heart was beating. That she had blood coursing through her veins. That she was out here inhaling and exhaling words. Ha! Ah! But then you go pretend that this is not a whole thing, huh? Go act as if no gown does not exist, they're never born. For what for whom 1984 grand shop never existed was 1981, 82, and then it was all of a sudden 83, then 85. No 84, so really, Carabo, including everything born in that rubbish, you're gone. Ooh. Cause you that do that can turn, turn back the hands of time and exsanguinate a woman from history. Oh, how you would just squash her like in that. Make sure she don't get bored. Uh, 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 uh. You that time traveling rando that's gonna turn back the hands. If only you can make sure she would never bone never. Then she never gonna be bone again. Ooh, 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 to show you flames. And now you wanna go back to history. Yay! Rubbish. Mm. So granted that all of these like nihilistic gangstrosities walking around in the streets of Johannesburg and beyond. Yeah, are imaginative that this is here gonna just carry on like this, you're gonna get splattered bug. Yeah, like a bug splatting splatty thing. Mm. Uh. Because we don't have decor. Mm. Buy a quarter of wheat for a denarius, a quarter of barley for a denarius, and you know. Oh, the oil and the wine don't do it. Mm. A day's wages for a loaf of bread. Look at you go, look at you go. Hungry look now. And you wish you had heard a sister girl. You wish you had heard a sister girl. And as for the bunnies in these streets, the females that are helping these dudes. Mmm. Shuppering me with a Jill Scott. Sister girl. I know you don't understand. But you're gonna have to understand. You ain't gonna live and show me that men can be better. What you think is coming to you is gone. I think it's sweet. I think it's stronger than this Jesus you claim lives in these streets. And besides, he knows my heart. And that's the start. I'm truly saved just like you. I'm not going to hell. You don't know what you're talking about. You can't handle the truth that we all gonna go to heaven even though I was living for the devil. Uh, who you getting in the way? Of what I'm feeling Getting in my way Ah! Gelzina You are justifying rubbish here yeah? 
Sitting over there claiming that you and I the same thing, yeah? Born again, you and us both together, birds of a feather, eh? Peace on Apollo, is that what you're saying, eh? The two of us, we are both going to enter heaven like the saints marching in. Oh, the saints go marching in. Oh, when the saints go marching in. Me and Karabo gonna be hanging out together. Even though I was bewitching her 20 years. Oh, really? You are convincing yourself right now where you're sitting that uh, indeed very, very clearly it's obvious. It is not going anywhere. And left or right, it's not living. Obvious. I'm going to heaven because well, I said the sinners pray. Even though every Saturday, I'm in that. Next to Sangoma, vomiting everything in the streets, inhaling them purple and taking it in my stride. That the bones are the bones of the bonesy bones. I just love it that way, you know. Uh, that Jesus, so he gets it, he understands that every so often I've got to get my way. Like Frank Sinatra, I'm doing Christianity my way. Suddenly, Karabu and I, together we are bones again. Just, you're gonna see one time. You're gonna see eventually. Yeah, girl, we gonna see. Soon and very soon, we gonna see. That's how accurate you are with your doctrines of demons and your destructive heresy. Yeah, yeah. Sitting over there, looking all lost, but not found. Like the Jay-Z from high school. But you know, at this present moment, I just feel as if this whole rubbish nonsense thing, I'm sick and tired. Every single day I come here and I speak, nah. every day, every day, every day. But like, it's more like I'm more like Yvonne Chaka Chaka and Bamba. Creating Bamba every day. No, thank you. Every day, every day, I create them by me. Eh? Every day, every day, I'm busy brewing and stewing some beer. I work hard every day to make you beer. Nkumboti. I wake up early in the morning to make my beer. My African beer. Mmm, cause you don't really get the gospel, do you? Every day, every day, me, I'm brewing beer. Instead of coming here to give the gospel, it appears I'm just making beer. 24 hours a day, of beer, 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 beer. So, since the gospel appears to be beer to all y'all, do you need to then be put on slippery paths to stumble? Mmm. Like written, it's written in God's word in the book of Isaiah. You've made out of me a doormat and said, Karabo, we want to walk all over you. Cause one of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. And I'm like, really? Is that how we're doing right now? For real, for real, here's the deal, ne? Psalm 125 is obviously very true. At the very present moment, it is more true than it's ever been ever true. Oh, okay. Yeah. The scepter of the wicked is not going to remain of the law on the land allotted to the righteous, lest the righteous should turn their hands aside to do evil. Ne? So, really and truly, we become just like you. Rubbish 24 hours a day, that's what's good. Eh, if God did not fix this, because it's been a minute, eh? It's almost a decade, not personally, as I've been suffering. But then some people have been going through it for even longer. Frankly, the world is unsurvivable right now. Nobody can live. Nobody can breathe. Nothing is working. Are we clear? Are we clear? Just like the medication. Just like in hospital. She clear. Are we clear? Are you waking up? If not, it's alright. After all, I'm making bump. Mmm. Every day, they are coming and make beer. Yeah. Here I took. Ladies are to be helping some men and some females. This here is no longer a going concern. Women are no longer concerned for the welfare of fellow females enough to protect them and their interests. And men are no longer careful to take care of widows and orphans and the like. Instead, they are not feeling entitled to bang, bang, shoot some females down, bang, bang, ooh. They hit the ground, bang, bang, oh, that awful sound, bang, bang. A whole bunch of randos try to kill Crank K until the Lord put her at the River Jordan and now the lady's gone. Now you see her, now you don't. It's a basic. Mm. Now I'm going to tell you exactly what it is that the Lord showed me, all of y'all that are imaginative. That this here is a going concern. That this here is something you're going to be able to continue to proliferate for another day. Another year, another minute. Perhaps another split second. Your wild imaginations, thus saith the Lord, we shall demolish them, and every last one of your lofty pretensions that exalts itself above the Most High, and hold unto captivity every thought, to the obedience of Jesus Christ. But, just in case you're in denial, allow me to let you know what was squeezed into my brains by the King of the Universe to help you gauge metaphorically with pictures like little children in a crayon book just once coming to the planet because of what you brought into it. Yeah. Okay. Guys, ne? Who fed you my life? I'm just saying, but like, just in case you didn't believe me, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Because at the end of the day, whether or not you believe is really rain, because very soon you're going to be forced dad to believe. <laughs> Listen, on the weekend, this past weekend that I was chilling in 
in weekend mode except i don't really even have such a mode as that because you've seen it for to make sure i don't rest anyway whatever mm. i watched a movie i do this thing vela vela on weekends i watch movies mm. during the week i watch series i'm presently watching csi las vegas okay uh as like something to just keep myself busy when i'm eating a dinner to get my head away from it all but on the weekends i watch movies so I can feel like I'm actually on a break, seeing as I don't exercise on the weekends and I try to be as leisurely as I possibly can with little success. But anyway, it is what it is. Okay. Mm. And this weekend, I made a decision to watch a movie called Life. Life. Oh, life. Oh, life. Oh, life. Ti -ti 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 -ti. Life. I'm afraid of the dark, especially when I'm in the park. Chilling on this planet only makes me want to disappear. And sometimes living out this earth ain't as easy as it seems. I am, however, going to leave in a wonderful balloon life. Oh, life. Oh, life. Except it's death. Lemon King King. Lemon Matarang. Hanguna Matara nonsense. I'm a ningi. A Matara. Where is my. Do you speak in English? There was a dead break on life, just like there was a dead break in the middle of my beautiful song. Life, oh life! <coughs> That's what happened. Mm. Choking out the life force, because some people actually in these streets be hating life. <coughs> Y'all got problems in these streets, you gonna have issues. Hey. Anyway, so I watched this movie called Life, oh life, oh life, mm, on Netflix. Uh, I apologize. Oh, believe me, I do. Except I'm not decorum. Where am I going to get decorum from in my life? It's not life, oh, it's death. Anyway, listen. So I watched this like movie on Netflix called Life or oh, Life. Okay, I can't help but sing. I, I watched this movie on Netflix called Life or oh, Life. Oh, it's just called Life. Yeah. Mm. Uh, starring Jake Gyllenhaal and like some other people. There's another one called Life. So I had to say Jake Gyllenhaal so you could know which one it was because there's like two Life movies on there. One of them is like Asian or something. It's Asian or something. It looks like it could be from South Korea. This one is from the US. I'm watching Life or oh, Life. Okay. This movie called Life on, on the Flix machine is new. Like, it's recent. I don't know how recent it is, but it's definitely one of them recent movies. That's what's good. Mm. It's out you hanging out in these streets and I'm watching it. <laughs> life. Oh, life. Dead break. It's about basically these, like, astronaut people going to Mars to, like, experiment their research. And then they bring back, like, samples from Mars. Okay yeah and upon bringing back samples from mars there is this like organism that ends up because now it has been placed in an environment where there are what do you call this it's oxygen it's a carbon organism sorry just like us you know how we made with carbon and everybody actually be speaking about us how it is that we, we got bad emissions and stuff whatever mm. this thing is a carbon um life form just like us as human beings and so needs things like oxygen it needs a in oxygen it needs water it needs food they're pretty much like human beings and on mars it was not able to survive because none such like you know resources are available so it was in total hibernation it was in hibernation the whole time but then these people pick up this like sand soil sample or whatever from mars and then they bring it on their spacecraft and then it starts to like have a life of its own right and there's like this oaky dude that is experimenting with it and initially it's it's so cute it's like it, oh it looks like a little flower and just you know burgeoning and blossoming and it, it grows at like these ridiculous rates it's got all these super like uh, basically it's got functionality that excels above that of humanity every cell it, it starts out as a single celled organism and then it's just like multiplies uh and becomes a multi-celled organism just like us and then each individual cell however is all like heart all eye all 
breath, all nose, all brain. Like, like with us, we're a multi-cell cellular organism as human beings, but our brains are here, you know, our eyes are here, our noses are here, but this thing is like all body functions in all of its cells all at the same time. Like, freaky little creepy living being that. Okay, anyway, whatever. So this is like this thing that's actually doing the rounds in these streets, okay? And it starts out as a little baby and it looks like a flower that's very, very mobile. And they give it a name, Kelvin. Mm, listen to that random rubbish, okay? Mm. They give it a name, Kelvin. They introduce it to the planet down below uh, from, from like the cameras that are upstairs in the spaceship and whatnot. And there's like celebration at Times Square uh, in New York and some child is out here. We're going to call it Kelvin. And everybody on Earth is celebrating because they found a life forces on Mars. They found a life source on Mars. They confirmed that there is life on Mars. Mm. Hey, then. And then this thing. I mean, fast forward, I'm not going to be explaining the whole movie. You can go and check it out on Netflix, okay? Next thing, there's the Nima Bobby Aja killing the whole crew. Like, yeah, long story short. <laughs> long story short. It kills the, the, the scientist that was first feeding it. it. It first went into hibernation because it got scared that something happened. And then it was woken up again by an electric current that this scientist was using to wake it up. Uh, and then it just started to kill. And it grew at... Like from the moment that it crushed the hand of that one scientist guy, yeah, it then like came out of that environment just so large. It it it, it grew. It started to grow at just this like ridiculous phenomenal rate. It was already growing at a phenomenal rate. And so being in that controlled environment, it was already not safe because it was just growing ridiculously fast. Mm. Anyway, anywho, anyhow, it crushes the hand of the one scientist guy. They take him out of that environment to save him. But then the other scientist guy goes in and asks for permission to kill this thing. He tries to kill it by burning it with fire. And it doesn't. Like, it doesn't. The gun of fire does not kill it. And that thing ends up getting inside the mouth of the scientist and basically eating him from the inside out. And when it comes out of his body, it's just so much bigger. It's just so much bigger. So that's when everybody on, on the crew now realizes that, oh my goodness, we've got something that we're dealing with over here that could kill us all. They try to then seal that that um, vent, that laboratory environment where it was contained. Uh, but then this thing found an oxygen source. It was super intelligent, way smarter than us as human beings and found a way out and is now using the resources of these human beings in the spacecraft to survive, to live, is killing them off one by one one after the other it's out here neutralizing some human lives and so jake gyllenhaal being the lead character in the show left with one woman so the whole the rest of the crew is now gone this thing has killed everybody okay this lethal nonsensical thing has killed everybody and the only people surviving left are this man and this woman and Jake Gyllenhaal then decides that he's going to be a hero and basically send this thing into outer space and basically it's like a, a, a kamikaze mission that he's on, right? So it's a suicide mission where he goes with this thing into outer space to make sure it does not go back into Earth's atmosphere. So human beings, uh, based on the whatever strength that they were left with in this outer space uh, environment, they could not go back into Earth's atmosphere without facing death in and of themselves as people. But if they went back into Earth's atmosphere, this thing could survive because it had displayed that it had abilities to survive all different kinds of random things coming at it. So they were going to just stay in outer space until this thing just dies off or whatever. Right. But then they made a decision that the girl's going to get in a pod and go back to the Earth to survive uh, while the dude is going to get in another pod and go into deep space. This thing is going to kill him, but then in and of itself it's going to die because once that dude is dead, he's got, it's got no feeding source and it's also got no oxygen. It's eventually going to run out and then just die in outer space type establishment thing. That was their like bright idea type establishment thing. But then this thing was so intelligent. It was so incredibly smart that while after baiting it with oxygen to bring it into his pod, the guy's pod, so he could go into outer space while the girl goes to Earth, this thing maneuvers the controls inside Jake Gyllenhaal's pod where it's at to make sure that the girl is the one that goes into outer space. So it, it maneuvers controls inside Jake, like they, 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 they are controls inside each pod that can manipulate remotely another pod. And this thing decides to, goes on right ahead to manipulate controls inside the Jake Gyllenhaal's pod to make sure that the girl goes into outer space 
while the dude with the monster goes to earth and then the thing it, it, he, he goes through the earth's atmosphere and everything lands on the ocean and then there are these men that look like they could be Viet vietnamese right fishing and they go and they try to open this thing while this thing has like basically just you know grown like a nest on top of like a like it's tentacly thing whatever oh it's gross right um on jay dylan hall but he's still like alive he's he's still kept alive he's not dead right and he is like telling these men no no don't like his controls are gone he can't use his hands because this thing has overwhelmed him altogether it's way more powerful uh and he tells these people that are opening this thing that no 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 don't open it no no and before the woman goes into outer space right she and uh, as she's on the way to earth well before she thought before she realized that she was being sent into outer space uh type setup thing she sends a message to the earth on some jake gyllenhaal or crew member abc has gone into outer space with the creature and is presumed dead because of him going into outer space with it and i'm headed to earth this thing is deadly it's lethal it cannot enter earth's atmosphere and if at all it does enter Earth's atmosphere earth's citizens need to do everything in their power to neutralize this thing otherwise it is an extinction level event she says something like that this thing gets to the it gets to into earth cracks through the atmosphere lands in the ocean with jake gyllenhaal and these vietnamese men open or at least the movie ends with them trying to open this thing to let jake gyllenhaal out and he's like trapped by this thing and he's like no no don't open no no don't open no no and the movie ends so essentially you can reach your own conclusion as to how things ultimately ensue it gets out gets into the ocean it's in earth now it's on earth it's got oxygen it's got a myriad of food it's it's going to thrive and at the rate that it grows it's going to become godzilla it's going to become this giant octopus. It, it looks like it, it, it's, it's disgusting. Oh, it's gross. It looks like a spider. Oh, it, it's just gross. It's gross. It's gross. Okay. The way that it looks. It, it, oh, goodness gracious. God have mercy. I don't even want to think about it. The way that this thing is so disgusting. So uh, you can just imagine like this giant octopus, this giant spider just continuously growing because it has a source of food on the earth. And if, and with the difficulty for the initial actor guy to kill it with some fire, what are human beings gonna do nuke it it, 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 might, it might survive that and get even more angry etc so essentially that was the beginning of the end of the human race because some creature was now on our earth yeah okay that's the movie that i watched on the weekend it's called life it's very very disgusting okay very well yeah i watched this movie called life on the weekend and i left it at that i left it at that all right i did just that and this morning when i woke up or oh, afternoon really because you all know that my hours are strange i sleep in the wee hour at, like at like five in the morning and i wake up like at later so when i did wake up uh i had a a a, a, a vision okay you know that that transitory phase between sleep and being awake it's dream mode but it's also vision mode i had a vision or a dream because i was in and out of i was just out about to get out of sleep of one of my family members I shall not mention which one being jake gyllenhaal in the pod with this thing all over her and her being like basically on earth but without the pod around jake gyllenhaal with her just lying on her bed with this thing grooved into her body eating her flesh eating her resources and it was on earth able to roam freely able to roam freely with me Carabos is like, yeah, one as I'm walking at you right now, being that woman that was sent into outer space. Oh, and the movie ends also as well with this woman being sent out into outer space. So she got misplaced in outer space. She was bound to die. And she's screaming. She's screaming. I was like, no, 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 no. This thing is going to earth. No, no, no. And I was in outer space like that woman being flown into outer space, the depths of it the depths of outer space with me saying no 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 just like that woman while my sibling my sister that that's the family member was on the floor on the ground here like jake gyllenhaal captured by this thing on earth able to roam basically waiting for its next victim waiting to explore the earth explore the earth and breathe as much oxygen eat as much at once and grow and so therefore bring about an extinction level event I woke up this morning to that as a dream as like a dream just in between transitory face so it was like a dream slash vision i see myself out in space no 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 
and I see my sister on earth trapped by a gruesome monster that is only going to get bigger on an earth that I tried, we tried to avert this thing from entering our atmosphere. But now it was here. And just like the way that that movie ended, you can only speculate as to what eventually happens afterwards. You can only speculate that the earth comes to a blistering end. What was God showing me with that? He gave me that the end of that movie as a dream. So in other words, it was prophetic. He was saying something in that. That's why I get it. I'm going home. All of y'all bang, bang, shooting me down, hit the ground. All that awful sound. Bang, bang, my baby shot me down. All these men trying to kill me because their Corbella is failing. All these women helping them along. Me trying to leave South Africa to no avail. All this blockage of my person using sorcery. Hey, guys, let me let me go on right ahead to explain that dream because I did say that I'm going to make sure that this is one part I insist. I don't want to be here long. It's not worth my time. I don't want to be spoon feeding nobody no more like proper because it's not worth it. It's entirely unnecessary to engage in all so much work because we are going home. What that dream was basically explaining to me is that all of y'all's experimentation was sorcery. It's reached a height, guys. It's reached a height. You initially experimented with these demons in outer space. You went to Mars. You went to the Sangoma and you experimented cosmically, piercing into our atmosphere, into another realm, and, and, uh, and played around with things that you thought you could contain. When my cousin, I have a cousin that is a prolific witch, or hectic, okay, or hard knock, yeah. When I was newly saved and newly introduced to understanding that she is into sorcery, I wrote her an email because I had gotten a dream where we were in some bar or restaurant and there were all these little snakes all over the show and they all belonged to her. There were small little snakes and they were hers and I was like, cousin, you need to kill these snakes before they get big. You need to kill all of these snakes before they get big in this restaurant that I'm chilling with my cousin. And she was so passive aggressive at the time when I got this dream, she was yet to be that mean to me, that passive aggressive. She told, uh, she, she, so basically her behavior towards me in my dream came as a surprise because in waking life, we were still good. Mm. I tell her in my dream, you need to kill these snakes because they're going to become pythons. They're going to become anacondas. They're going to become uh, these, these basically brutal vipers, these poisonous vipers that are going to strangle you. You're going to be the one that's going to suffocate under these, these um, vipers. Under these snakes, these pythons, Hebaton. Passive aggressively, she's angry with me and she's like, I still got no. I wake up from that dream, understand it for exactly what it is, write her an email, and I'm like, chick, I know you're involved in strange stuff, you're into dark arts, but it's water under the bridge, I don't care what you're doing to me. But this thing that you are into, I had a dream that it was small little snakes and they're gonna get bigger, you need to stop. I, I wrote her an email. I was like, you need to stop the thing that you started. Right now, there's small snakes. But they're only going to get bigger. You can't be petting a snake. You can't be petting a wild animal that's one day going to turn around and eat you. And she ignored my email. She ignored my email. In my dream, she passively, aggressively walked away from me and said nothing. So I guess it was fulfilled in waking life. Fast forward, what? 10, 11, 12 years down the line. And look at her now. She is severely involved in darkness. She is prolific in the occult. She's involved in blood sacrifices. It has strangled her it has strangled her she is gone she's a dead woman walking the little tiny snakes that she was petting are now entire chunky bowing constrictors able to crush bones in one fell sweep and i warned her i warned this chick so just like the warning to my cousin that kill these snakes everybody in the occult that started the stuff that you started you were dealing with lizards with tiny little snakes and now those lizards are dinosaurs now those snakes uh, anacondas out here swimming around in the Amazon able to be seen by helicopters from I don't know how many kilometers above sea level the way they're so big and that is a, a snake belonging to one person two three ten snakes to one person you can't even control your snake nest brah you can't control it it's big now it's huge and just like in that movie the reason why the Lord used that movie life like proper I, I watch the movie and then next thing boo I get a vision about it mm. You are showing me that the thing they started was just like that pet that they picked up from Mars. It was small, it was cute, and everybody was smiling at it. If you watch that movie, you will see. Everybody's like, oh, it's cute. They even give it a name, Calvin. Yeah. And Calvin ends up being the end of the Earth. Like, you know how many people have been warning CERN with their Hadron Collider and what they're experimenting with there? Somebody tried to raise up a lawsuit against CERN, from what I understand recently. 
on some y'all need to stop doing this stuff because it is threatening the safety of the human race and CERN the court voted against that person like Papa the warnings have been getting sent to the human race the Lord raised up that man to file a motion against the activities at CERN to stop what they're doing and the court imagined that man bizarre to even expect an organization like CERN to just suddenly stop what it's doing because a man feels as if the what they're doing at CERN is a threat to the human race's safety. He not only went to a, a high court, he also then went to a, um, a, a loftier court, either a supreme court or something, to appeal when his initial complaint was ignored. And he was ignored yet again at the supreme court, so he can't now go back. Like proper, go look it up. There is a, a somebody that raised a, a case against CERN to make them stop and they didn't and the concerns were there is this is a, a risk to humanity yeah it's a risk to humanity and the courts ignored him the courts ignored him that's a person that raised like proper hiring lawyers paying that much money to raise what call what what appears to be a bizarre case how are you gonna go waste all that money no he is not wasting money he's not wasting money he is onto something he is god's grace to the human race you have been getting warnings just like i went to my cousin and warned her and said chick stop this your snakes are small kill them before they get big stop doing witchcraft you cannot anticipate as a human race that you are going to perform so many rituals do so much witchcraft as a body as a body as many people not just one or two people sparsely scattered back in the day witchcraft was a taboo in in villages in communities where it is that one person gets busted and they get you know followed by villagers with pitchforks on some how dare you bring this wicked thing among us they had to hide it they had to bury it they had to pretend they were not doing it and when they got busted they had to run or they could face getting killed like basically vigilantically killed by villagers for practicing sorcery that's how witchcraft used to be viewed once upon a time but now it's glamorized now it's being done on grammy stages in the u.s now it is being performed on shows on netflix in south africa there's like a whole epidemic of bongoma being introduced into series into sitcom into movies and it's being glamorized it's not looked it's not frowned upon they're not looked at as baloi, they are looked at as responsible, permissible members of society. Celebrities by Atwasa, left, right and center like you won't understand. When you then reinforce behavior, more and more people get rewarded by the prospect of pursuing it. And so more and more people are even faking calls. A lot more people are um, experimenting with sorcery. There's a whole people on YouTube that are that, that do tutorials, y'all, on how to do sorcery. And Ebato. There's channels of women out here telling men and women alike online, if you want this man to come back into your life, mix up this onion, mix up this herb, mix up that, and say this to it and let it sit in the sun for three days and he will never leave you alone. Mix this up and your husband will never leave you. Mix this up and your wife will never leave you. Mix the ebato. Witchcraft. Being trained to people and how she about the views? 500,000. 1 million. When you look at the subscriber numbers of that uh, channel, 250,000. Whoa, this person has got 250,000 subscribers to give people free advice on how to do witchcraft spells in their own households. So now if they learn it on a YouTube channel, on you, or if they learn it off a YouTube channel, just in the same way that I have saved a whole bunch of money from, uh, uh, from seeing dermatologists to clear my skin because I watched a whole bunch of YouTube videos on how to get my skin corrected. I know a nice little combination of kojic acid and um, hyaluronic acid and retinol and this is going to basically get my skin in a bunch. So I corrected my own skincare without seeing a dermatologist, my own skin. I corrected it without seeing a dermatologist because of YouTube. So, however, similarly too, uh, all that positive stuff can then also go in the opposite direction. Where it is that where before you would go to a sangoma to bring back lost lava, where before you would go to a sangoma to beg a minak pela, where before you would go to a Sangoma to ascertain a job promotion. Where before you get my point now, you've got like a myriad of Sangomas on YouTube. Doing spells, incantations, basically teaching you, giving you guides on how to, how to. I also know how to cornrow now. Mm -hmm. I never used to know how to cornrow, but I can cornrow now. Yeah, that's what's good because of YouTube. I would have had to go to some school. There are YouTube channels teaching you how to sew all together, like big fat chunky skills, how to put together a car, a car, like put together a car on YouTube instruction piece by piece and this thing will move how to assemble a bicycle yourself on youtube no more do you need to go to a mechanical engineering school now you can just watch a youtube channel and concentrate loftily enough don't even have to go to university you can literally get degree type knowledge by just watching lectures online there's a lot of people prepared to give this information for free because they actually are not giving it for free they get paid ad revenue so uh, the more people watch them the more people subscribe the more money they make so it's a it's a second stream of income they're prepared to give all this knowledge they're prepared to share it because it is paid it is not unrewarded and so if there is 
if there is a good a positive side to all this information on the internet like learning how to cornrow your own hair learning how to do your own mini twists make your own mini braids learning how to install your own uh weaves and what have you where before you would have to go to a salon that's what's good if youtube can teach you such skills then of course there are some gomas out here supplementing their income by teaching people how to self aid self succeed how to knock a colleague out the way make sure they don't get a job so people are saving a whole bunch of money by just watching a youtube tutorial on how to do a spell i, I keep lamenting in my youtube channel saying how much does this witchcraft cost the way that the way you bewitch so much how much does it cost you but some of them it's nothing at all it's nothing at all they just click on some chick on youtube follow her instructions carefully observe it working somewhere else in the corner and then experiment on a Christian. That's why that's why people are slapping me so much with witch, with, with, Corbella, with love spells, with juju. That's what's good. It's because it's self-made. It's in the house. It's self-concocted. Now, with the increase in knowledge, like it's written in the book of Daniel, that is presently gawking at us in these last days, mm, that we're looking at. Yeah, then also comes an increase in secret knowledge, in esoteric knowledge, in secret society type knowledge, the kind of knowledge that only dwelt in spell books. It's written in God's Word in the Acts of the Apostles that uh when witches came to repent to give their lives to jesus christ they burned all of their spell books and the value of those books was a certain amount it was a great amount of, of money the value of them how much they cost and they were prepared to burn them so there was a time when secrets held in spell books cost a whole bunch of money to purchase to acquire because on that day you were given an office as a witch doctor to offer these services in exchange for a fee so if you're going to be buying a spell book you are going to be buying a, 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 a like a degree a, a, a job you are investing in a career so you spend a whole bunch of money now it would be bizarre to sell i would imagine a spell book for the, the amount of money that it was sold for back in the day because now the information is readily available on the internet there are people that are earning a whole bunch of ad revenue to teach people how to cast spells there are witches coming on national television confessing that they they are trying to curse a president you know how in the u.s there was a woman that was out here speaking about how it is that she belongs to a coven and they're trying to curse Donald Trump. When Russia went to war with the Ukraine, there was a coven covered by a news network where it is that they were casting spells on the Ukraine to make sure that they don't win, that Vladimir Putin is protected. And these people were covered. Like in social media, it was allowable for such things to be run on social media to curse the Ukraine that, that Vladimir Putin might win a war. That's what's happening in the 21st century lay janes and lay joes are doing witchcraft and sometimes they don't even pay witchcraft practitioners any fee they do it themselves because they learn like learning how to do cornrows on youtube they are learning how to do sorcery and when there is when there are that many people having access to what would have been historically spell books where when 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 lay joes and lay janes are being taught how to use basic herbs and and spices on the earth to bring out magic powers out of them guys it's on a multiplier. They, no longer is the witch being cast out of the village first and foremost. As an outlaw, no longer are they being burned at the stake, stoned to death, necklaced. No longer is the local witch being burned. Now, they're being heralded. They're being elevated. They're being uh, put on the shoulders of society as heroes. And it is frowned upon to hate their craft. There was recently some Irish woman who walked up with some ugly little menacing performance on stage doing a ritual that got covered by so many people on youtube on some what in the world is going on with with this what, what's going on like a witch on some show some israeli women women won that particular competition but the public voted for her that irish woman paul postrali or something i don't know what her name is that that lady was out out like out like a, a closet homosexual but like one that has finally decided that they're gonna speak their mind their truth mm. she was out like that with her witchcraft and she was even screaming in the go uh, uh, when being interviewed that I'm a witch, and she was very very proud of it. Very very proud of it. That's this world. Celebrities are doing rituals in broad daylight. When you call someone a witch, it's no longer an insult. It is no longer an insult. So with the number of people practicing sorcery, just mushrooming on the daily, people taking just what they want. Korobel and from here to Timbuktu, you you find a woman on the internet and you make a decision that uzumchata with your witchcraft. Just constant experimentation. Mm that's what's good like little children what do you think you're doing to the earth what do you think the cosmic climate looks like you guys what do you think the cosmic climate looks like it is no longer just the witch in the village that gets stoned to death or that is hiding or the sangoma that's got a, a snake-like cue 
outside of her premises because people are in need of her services. Now, her cues are not so snake-like anymore because people are self-practicing. They are self-practicing. And so the Sangoma goes on YouTube to supplement her lost income because people are starting to see that these things here are not deep secrets of Satan anymore. They're no longer secrets. They're just out information of Satan. The deep things of Satan, like in the letter to the churches at, at um at the deep things of Satan, I think it's Pergamum. Mm -mm. That's where Satan has his throne. The ones who get the deep things of Satan, I do believe it might be Thyatira. Mm. But I stand corrected, okay? Yeah, but people who 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 understand the deep things of Satan are more numerous now than ever before in an unacceptable capacity. Way too many of them. Way too many. And each individual one is contributing to creating perforations in the stratosphere, in the spiritual stratosphere. When you dabble with sorcery, you open a portal, you guys. You open a portal, however big, however small. These portals can be closed by the blood of Jesus, by Christians praying over them. They can drive out darkness and lock it in the second heaven. Make sure it doesn't come to the earth. But when you are doing to Christians what I saw being done to me in that dream, throwing me into outer space, kicking me out of the earth, the only people that are able to essentially put sticky tape on the hole you opened so no more entities will come in. We are the only ones. Christians are the only people standing in the gap. That man, I don't know if he's a Christian or what, but that for the cause of humanity, filed a lawsuit against CERN is like a person that was putting sticky tape on a hole in the cosmic environment such that entities there, that side, don't come in here. And the Supreme Court shunned his case. Now you're trying to kick me out the earth. And by me, I mean multiplier Christians. Add a multiplier to us. Tina Song, you are actively trying to exsanguinate Christianity out of society. You are squelching us. You are smothering us. You are trying to make us not pray. You're trying to get us off YouTube. You're trying to get us anywhere it is that we are at to disappear. You want us gone. next, Karun. When we are your life source. In that movie, Jake Gyllenhaal is shouting up and down on some, why are you busy calling this thing Calvin? Why are you playing with it like it's a toy? Stop, stop calling it that when it's still so small that it is not a threat to anybody. Somebody in the spaceship is like, y'all need to be careful with this thing. And everybody ignores him and they embrace it and love it and adore it until he in and of himself gets killed by that monstrosity. A lot of people are practicing witchcraft in the 21st century way more than is frankly feasible to take in one stride. It's not comfortable to take in one stride. Way too many. And like I said, you are burning holes in the, the spiritual stratosphere. You are burning holes. When you do a, a seance, a Ouija board session, you are opening a portal. When you cast a spell, you're opening a portal right inside your house. Some of y'all, you la boyfa, you are scary cats. If there were to be poltergeist activity in your houses, you'd be freaked out for crying out loud. And yet you are you're practicing spells in your own kitchen. In your own kitchen. You're going to have a hard time waking up in the middle of the night, having heard a plate breaking in the kitchen only to find that nothing moved it you don't have an animal there's no wind but that plate or all those dishes just fell on the ground by themselves you will then remember waloy you will remember that you did a ritual in your own house you opened the portal and now this thing is hassling you it's trying to pull out some hairs out of your scalp that's what's good now you're scared now you're calling a medium look at you go look at you calling a medium to deal with the haunting in your house fire with fire that's what you're doing fighting fire with fire you bring yet another member of the devil's kingdom to just bring more incense into your house, more random sprinkling of salt, more sage burning in your house. And when then that medium's activity does not work, you then bring a priest, a preacher. You, 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 you pray scriptures over your house. You hope that that's going to get rid of it. It's written in God's word in the book of James that if you ask for anything in prayer, but don't believe that you're going to receive it, you are unstable in all your ways and should not anticipate that you're going to get anything in prayer. So when you use all different kinds of things to deal with your problems in life, including Jesus, he's not going to hear you. He is not mocked. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, so too shall he reap. So you cannot after a medium fails to take the poltergeist activity out of your house then go to jesus you you can't unless you are sincerely actually turning to god and trusting him only for aiding with your the haunting in your house but most of you are dab you are tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine and so for those reasons christianity or jesus the name of jesus the blood of christ is just one of the methods that you're using to deal with hauntings in your life only one and with such an unbelieving world, you can't please God. And when you don't please God, he will judge you. He will finally finish off his indignation on the planet. He will seal the chambers, close them, let his bride come in and like proper, let his indignation pass. That's what God will do. You are tossed to and from by every wind of doctrine, including Christianity. 
you are not solid you are not rooted in jesus only and he's the only way out of this only go read what, what is the testimonies of near alien abductions and how it is that when these people mention the name of jesus these aliens let them go the name like that that is the name above all names every knee bows every tongue confesses that he is lord that's what's good mm. And yet, even with that evidence, you are still not trying to let go of everything that you might hold fast to Christ and Him only. Him only. Only Christ. Yeah. You you mock those who are Jesus onlyists. Those of us who are holding on to nothing but the kingdom of heaven, you mock us. And in so mocking us, you are imaginative that you can actually throw us into outer space, disappear us from the earth. And God is giving you a strong delusion to believe that you can do that. That's just the, the, the way that the last days looks like, guys. The Lord gives the world a strong delusion to believe the lie because you've not loved the truth but have taken pleasure in your unrighteousness. We trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. Nothing shall by any means harm us. Nothing prospers against us. No weapon that is fashioned against us prospers. We're the ones that refute every tongue that accuses us in the judgment and we condemn it. So therefore nothing can ever truly conquer us. The gates of Hades cannot prevail against the body of Christ. The kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. We win every single time. We are more than conquerors. And so when it looks like we are losing, that's the end for you. That's the end. It is impossible for us to lose. Only because God said so. That's what the Bible has to say. So when then you think that you can kick me like a soccer ball into outer space, make me disappear from the earth, entirely bury me, ascertain that I can go nowhere, and I appear to be maintained in your sorcery, I appear to be kept in a bunch by your sorcery, that is your delusion. When, when you are appearing to succeed against the body of Christ, that is your delusion. That is your delusion. That's what you guys need to understand. The strong delusion is in God making you believe that you can actually successfully conquer Christianity on the earth. You are working to the nail right now to extract it because you are under the, the, the folly of your father, the devil, who has blinded the minds of unbelievers. He has prospered to blind your minds. He has prospered to cause a whole bunch of you to partake in satanic rituals so that a whole horde of his minions can, can prosper to overrun the earth overrun the earth when you keep on burning holes into the stratosphere with your sorcery in your own household when you keep on burning holes into the atmosphere with sorcery in your covens your cults your secret societies when you keep on burning holes into the atmosphere in just about in like everywhere uh, through television through media through you get my point hey guys there are too many little holes being opened there was a time when we could patchwork it there was a time when revivals and countries could basically close open portals there was a time when we were able to clean up after you all the dirt, all the like stools in the streets. We were able to successfully, like I said, I'm sick and tired of being a toilet brush, a toilet cleaner. Always just like, you know, trying to make sure that a toilet is clean when there's like stools floating around. This thing here is blocked. It's I'm not going to prosper. I'm exhausted of, of washing the gunk of the earth. And when then this blocked toilet is not successfully being unclogged by me, that's when it's over for you. When Christians are no longer succeeding to seal holes you've opened in the earth that's when it's over and it's over the lord gave me that vision to help me understand that it is over why because the strong delusion is created what is the strong delusion i was in outer space i was in the pod that flew into outer space with me screaming and crying no 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 just like that woman that's what that dream was telling me mm. the lord is saying that christians are in outer space saying no 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 because we care for the earth we care for citizens down here we care for brethren not brethren, they're not really our brethren, you get my point, but like we care for the human race because that's what God will have us do. We are burdened for the human race and we are trying to get them to repent, to stop doing this thing, to stay God's wrath from falling on the earth. And instead, they are kicking us out. And the reason why you guys are kicking us out, just like in that movie, the thing has taken control. The thing, like Jake Gyllenhaal tried to take this thing into outer space, but it overwhelmed him. In my dream, instead of Jake Gyllenhaal, it was my older sister. And it had taken her over altogether, even though she tried to avert it. When demonic possession of a planet is so exquisite that now the entities are in control instead of you, when you no longer have your own faculties, when you can't, when you walk up and down these streets trying to find a deliverance minister and you don't get anywhere, you're just meeting some charlatan archer trying to use the name of God as a means of financial gain. You're walking in Amos 8 and 11 type vibes. The day is coming when the Lord is going to send out a fair man on the land, not a fair man for food, nor that of a thirst of water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. You are in a food desert, spiritually, where it is that the great apostasy has happened. You drive from church to church to church to church to church in your neighborhood, in your city, in your country, and there is nobody preaching the gospel. There is nobody there to actually heal you. The Lord has come to set the captives free, 
and yet those who are his servants in a position to rightly serve as they ought. Look at what you've done to them. Look at how it is that you've put me in, in, in a shack at the back of my mom's house, a uh, slaving, producing really good content that's going nowhere, not getting viewed. You are working to the nail to bury me from the world, making sure that people like you one day will get to a point where they want freedom. And yet they're not going to be able to find it properly because it's very difficult to rightly divide the word of truth when you are outside of the kingdom of heaven and you are that demon possessed. Circumcision and therefore an ability to understand God's word is a spiritual process. And if you see that you are hung, you are dirty, filthy, if you see that you are dead and in dire need of being set free from the, the bondages, the chains that are about you, you have only entered one step in. What you need now is to be fed. It's written in God's word, blessed are they who hunger and who thirst for righteousness, for they will be fed. What, go, what, 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 what is going to be an epidemic in the last days is that people are going to be hungry and thirsty for righteousness because they will be exhausted with wickedness. But they will drive Amos 8 and 11 because they have taken so long to repent from church to church to church looking for food. But there will be a fair mine of the word of the Lord because of the fact that they resisted the truth of God for so long. They loved the lie, took pleasure in their unrighteousness. So God will judge you with your false shepherds. He will judge you with men that are using the name of God as a means for financial gain. He will judge you with all these people that are insincere about Christ. These people that are charging you a fee to consult with them in church. He will judge you by sending you to these people and you will come back dry and empty, more despondent than you were when you first went to see that man of God or that woman of God. That is the judgment on the world. So therefore, these things are taking over and you are unable to find people who can successfully help you come out from the darkness that you are in. Darkness that you are in. Like, <laughs> I have counseled my sister to seek out deliverance. I have. And guess where she tried to go the other day? Reima. Femine, dog. Femine. Reima. You know Reima. Renbeck. Yeah. The day is coming. When the Lord is going to send out a fair mind on the land. So not a fair mind for food, nor that of a thirst of water. But if you're hearing the words of the Lord, coupled with the fact that she's proud, too proud to come and ask me, too proud to listen to me, and too proud to see what can be done to get her delivered through a saint in her backyard. She undermines me. She takes a piece of my counsel and then asks my mom to send her to church. And the church that the two of them want to go to is Rema. Are you serious? You're not going to get delivered there. You're just going to be chilling under some fluffy sermons where they are preaching some fluffy whatever, talking about whatever, and the moment you rock up with, with your strongholds and you try to get help for it, they might tell you to come back next Sunday. They might give you some dude in the corner that's going to be looking at his watch, trying to go home because, goodness gracious, Sunday lunch. There are too many of you and too few of us as Christians to get delivered. You're going to have to self-deliver. At this point, you're going to have to get in the Word of God. You're going to have to watch people like me, people like people basically on the internet, people that can teach you how under heaven or tell you how under heaven to come free from these bondages because a lot of these people that you go to are worthless. They're useless. To be set free by God, to go to Him, if you go to Jesus Christ, you will likewise not be turned away. But you are living in the last days where there's the great apostasy. It's a great famine. You're not finding churches preaching the Word of God. You're finding nothing but nonsense, but you're sick. You're sick. Like, yeah. However, what you have done is ascertain that the only people that can have your back, you have cast, thrown them into outer space. You've thrown Karabo, you don't want to even hear what I have to say. You keep on coming up against my ministry. You are bound in chains. And there are so many of you that as one little unique individual, as just a couple of unique individuals, all of us, we cannot get to all of you. You made sure that a revival does not happen such that you would have a whole church praying for your lost souls, trying to get you delivered. Now there's just one scantily, like, sp spotly scattered Christian chilling in one corner of your society that is unperused and unlistened to. Nobody is hearing them. Nobody is heeding them. Everybody is laughing at them. And you are tormented by your demons. Tormented, do you understand, by your demons. And you can not come up for air. You can't breathe. You can't breathe. And all you have is just some chick on the internet. And it's not enough. She's too far. You need a lot more help. But you are in it alone. These entities have taken over. So that dream that God gave me slash vision with my sister being trapped with this thing on earth while I was thrown in outer space. It was also metaphorically descriptive of the rapture. You don't want us. You keep throwing us out. You make sure that we're not getting hurt on YouTube. You are ascertaining that we don't grow our channels. We don't monetize. We stay poor. You are angry. You're trying to kill us. You keep on committing human sacrifice rituals that fail time and time again. It's okay. It's all good in the hood. Fine. Shop. All right. Let him go then. Trumpet blast. We will not all die, but we will be changed. With the twinkling of an eye, we will suddenly have incorruptible bodies and we will get caught up in the sky to meet the Lord in the air. The dead in Christ, however, will rise first. 
if you don't want us if you keep on insisting on kicking me like a soccer ball all the way into outer space god will catch me right there in outer space where i'm like no 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 no. don't let these entities come to the earth and the lord will just simply change me in the twinkling of an eye right in the sky where it is that you've thrown me away whatever little strange corner in the occult that you have banked me in to make sure that my youtube channel goes nowhere having frozen me given me binary code make sure that even my shorts don't grow my channels anymore all the stuff that you've kept me suspended in like you've thrown me in outer space said i think funny garabo sharp good right right there in the middle of this the 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 the, the, the what do you call this the, the in, in the middle of outer space where you've thrown me where, where you've put me in your occult in your rituals the things you've done to make sure i don't go anywhere the lord has allowed you to do that because he knew that while i'm busy suspended in outer space i will be changed and i will be caught up to meet the lord in the air and now space will be of no essence because i'm going to be an eternal being i will see him as he is because now i'm going to be just as he is i am now no longer going to be confined to earth's gravity and oxygen like other living beings i will be able to survive outer space where you've put me where you have suspended me but guess who is on earth now satan and he has got so many minions he has got so many battalions just waiting to devour waiting for the charge of god waiting for one thing and one thing only to happen the rapture the devil has got a battalion an army do you understand um, and uh, like a whole military base camp in every country on the earth that has been invited in soldiers conscripted into the army by people you have invited these entities to live among you and for now they're under the restraint and they can't do as much as they wanna and they're waiting for one event only the rapture once that's happened and the restrainer is removed you are going to see flames you are going to see flames just like in that movie life the earth would inevitably see flames because that ugly menacing spider octopus thing came out of the pod and started to terrorize the human race killing everything in its wake it's written in god's word in luke 21 that men's hearts are going to fail them for fear of the things which are coming on the earth the stuff you're going to see you're going to realize you invited it for now it's invisible they're in spirit form you're gonna see actual monsters in the tribulation and you are going to wish you had not thrown me gigantic slingshot eh? into the atmosphere watch me go 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 burn into the atmosphere and land in outer space you're gonna wish you did not block my youtube channel you're going to wish you did not thwart me from moving left or right you're gonna wish you did not block my marriage prospects my husband you're going to wish you had not done any of that you're gonna wish you didn't do human sacrifice rituals the gorbella all these things you are going to wish you had just left me live and cause a little mini revival with whomever will watch me on youtube you're gonna wish you had let me reach some souls for christ including you you're going to wish for the good old days when you did not get open your window and there was literally like a demon just gawking at you go window or when you look there's like monsters like the kinds that you see in movies walking up and down i did a video explaining to you that the governments across the world are going to form police forces to deal with entities living and dead ones just like he the lord used another movie to explain that r.i.p.d rest in peace department you know that movie where it is that it was a police department for dead things walking yeah i had a dream once long ago where the law showed me that governments across the world are going to formulate law enforcement a body of sorts a regulatory body to deal with sighted otherworldly beings non-human beings so instead of the south african police department it's going to be the south african police department alien division like that's there's probably going to be something like that across the world but for now, you think I'm speaking fantasy, horror movie. Girl, you are imaginative. You watch too many movies. That's what's good. Throw away Netflix. Yeah. Kick it like a soccer ball. Jigga how look out that spacey. Jaga bolo ya thing. Do that, Karabo. Because right now, obviously, girl, you're crazy. Mm. I sound crazy now. Until first of all, the first thing to creep you out is the rapture. And then next thing, there's actual menacing monsters walking around. I'm not making any of this up. It's in the book of Revelation. Go read it. The bottomless, the, 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 the things that come out of the bottomless pit. Some of them are going to be these scorpions, these, uh, what do you call this? Um, giant locusts that have got the sting of scorpions, having the teeth of men and head of horses and what have you. That are going to sting men for five months and they will seek to find death and not be able. Men's hearts are going to fail them for things which are coming on the earth. You're going to want to commit suicide and not be able to die every last one of your ambitions on that day is now going to seem fruitless the lord already showed me life what's coming 
the thing that you played with thinking it's a little baby, it's cute. Oh, and giving it a name, it's Calvin. It's ancestral worship, it's harmless, guys, it's innocuous. It's really gonna, it's gonna hurt anybody, come on, bravo. You don't want to acknowledge your ancestors. Yeah, it's little Calvin now, Archie being given a name by a cute little girl in Times Square, like in the movie. And Calvin becomes the end of the human race as we know it. You dabbled with Calvin, just like my cousin dabbled with those snakes, just like you're dabbling with Corbella, you're dabbling with Brimpek Los Lava, you're dabbling with dabbling, dabbling with human sacrifice rituals, dabbling with whatever you can dabble with. Keep dabbling, baby. Keep dabbling. Dabble on, lady dude. D dabble. Because you have already brought a battalion of fierce satanic soldiers on the earth and they're only waiting for their marching orders from God Almighty. They cannot do their most until we're gone. Don't say I didn't warn you. I'm standing out in the name of Jesus Christ, Crank K. Peace.